My name is William Churridge. I'm a freediver. I specialize in unassisted freediving and I currently hold the world record in that discipline of 102 meters. So nine years ago, I attempted to set the world record in unassisted freediving at 100 meters, which is a hectometer. Um, and I did it to try and raise awareness to the plight of New Zealand's hectares dolphins, which are critically threatened with extinction. So hectares dolphins are found almost right around the South Island and uh, the North Island subspecies Maui dolphin is found off the North Island west coast. And they are in trouble at the moment because um, thousands, literally thousands of dolphins have died in fishing nets in the last 40 years. So I got this new idea in, over the last few years of um, doing a swim in New Zealand that connects the North and South Islands across the Cook Strait, which is the channel between them. And that strait has been crossed many times by swimmers, but my idea was to swim it underwater, only coming up for breaths every 25, 30 metres or so. He hadn't done anything like that distance. No way now he's going to manage it, even in the best of conditions, let alone Cook Strait with its cold and its currents and its wind. The reason behind the dive was to draw attention to the plight of the Maori dolphin. Right now my partner Sachiko is pregnant. She's about to give birth to our daughter. And the idea that our daughter will, might be brought up in a world where the dolphins or other species like them have become extinct, it's, it's sad to, to think like that. So we've been waiting uh, for a few days for some good weather in this, um, this tide window. We just got the call um, literally like an hour and a half ago that it's good to go for tomorrow. It's swimmable. But it gives us like 13 hours to pack everything together and drive down to Wellington, which is a four hours drive, and somehow try and get some sleep tonight before getting on the water in the morning. So I managed to get some sleep on the way and then a few hour, more hours sleep that night at my brother's place in Wellington. No means was I fully rested when we got into the boat the next day. Um, but the adrenaline was carrying me at that point. The crew was so much a part of that, and that trust is a huge thing. It makes this sort of thing happen. I decided to do the crossing from the North Island to the South Island, which meant that I started west of Wellington at Cape Terafiti. And there it was, it was nice and calm. We've got cloud, William, yeah. where, where the mark that you'd be aiming for it would normally be so I'm just going to go ahead of you on the boat and, and swim towards the boat. I think. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's an awesome motivation to do this for something more important than myself. Um, it's an honour for me to be able to kind of represent the dolphins and do this swim for them. Being a little bit nervous, don't know what it's going to be like, never tried anything like this before, it's never, never been done before, so I don't really know what to expect. Where should I start from? Here? Well, we're in, eh? Woo! So, when he touches the rock, you start the rock. Oh, good luck, Will. So when I started the crossing uh, from Cape Terafiti, it was perfectly calm, the water was clear, I could see the reef fish swimming around amongst the kelp below me. It was beautiful, I was just kind of gliding over this, this tapestry of, of sea life. I had a nice kind of calm spell just to, to ease myself into it. The further we got offshore, um, we started to get into a little bit more chop and then we kind of hit a patch where we were no longer protected from the headland. We had um, strong current that was contrasting the, the wind so it was making it really peaky and choppy. Um, it was kind of a little bit like being in a, in a washing machine at that point. I'll make this one more north, Daniel. So Daniel was paddling just behind me, to my, to my right most of the time, encouraging me, giving me support, and when he could see that I was 
like maybe getting a little demoralized because the South Island wasn't getting any closer, then he'd say, no, no, you're still making progress. regular rhythm, he's diving regularly, uh, nice pause on the surface. Uh, he's taken on some food and some uh, fluids quite regularly. So we're in a kind of a good pattern, but it's still pretty lively and the current's pushed us south. And we're probably a couple of miles further south than we'd like to be, certainly not in a straight line between Cape Terrafitti and uh, Piranha Head. And we know the tidal turn. How's his temperature? We need to monitor his warmth. His temp is an eight. Well, that's great. He's doing well. He's halfway. We don't know whether to tell him or not, but because he might think he's further, you know, it might be bad, but we're going to tell him, so. Halfway. Hey, William, you're doing great, mate. We're halfway, just about the last dive, so you're right on target, mate. The time's good, your speed's good. Your position in the water is good. Keep going, brother. Hey, fairly well. Yeah, not as fresh as, as when it started, but uh, still going okay. Yeah. You just, uh, right. you just passed halfway, buddy. So, well yes, done, sir. eh? Thank you. Well done, mate. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. I just passed halfway, which was kind of a little bit of a downer because I, um, I was expecting to have been further along than that, but it's probably good that they did remind me um, that I was only halfway. That way I didn't become too complacent, otherwise I might have been expecting to get to shore sooner than I was. Because I knew this was just an enormous challenge. Just to reach halfway was amazing. No dolphins? Nothing. No fish, no dolphins. So as, as South Island was coming closer, I could see the, the Cook Strait ferries coming out of Picton, heading past. And also my support crew was seeming to get a little bit anxious maybe and, and telling me that we needed to make sure we avoided the current that was coming out of Tory Channel. It's just a matter of swimming at Piranha Head now. We've done all we can, so yeah. position them. Um, just don't know how bad it will be when it starts flowing out of, out of Tory Channel. Should be about now. So. Yeah, it is. We can we can feel it out there. So, yeah. Um, but if it gets too much further left, he'll go nowhere. It was at this point that I guess maybe I started to get a little bit fatigued, and it seemed like the South Island just wasn't getting any closer. They said that he was getting in cramps and that the water was cold, and I thought, oh no. I really was worried at that point that it was too much. We'd heard that, that he was really struggling and, and he was getting close, but was he going to make it? So we were left with this tantalising moment of, of um, is it going to happen or not? The other thing that was starting to happen was we were seeing that I was being moved by the current to the south quite rapidly. So those two currents would have merged and just funneled me straight back out into the Cook Strait faster than I'd ever be able to swim. And finally, only in the kind of the last few hundred meters, I told myself, you can do this, you're, you're almost there. And I started to realize that it was actually, actually going to happen. Um, and for those last maybe four or five swims underwater, I remember that last swim as I came under and I finally saw the, the kelp and the rocks of the South Island and then put my hand on the edge of the, of the shore. Whoa. Oh my god. So happy to have made it. Well done, buddy. Thanks, man. Well done. Good shit. Um, just feeling like so much relief, ex supreme exhaustion, and, and cold, hypothermic. Oh my god. <laughs> You have just achieved what's never been done. Grateful to have had this opportunity also to speak up for 
dolphins who can't speak for themselves. 